We are going to look at binding the slider control to the text block in text boxes. There are a few problems with binding it to a text box. I'm going to sh show you one solution. We'll do this on the layer control. Start by opening it. We need to add a column to our grid. We now need to add a stack panel for our slider and text block and later text box. We'll add it to the top to make it easy to find. They need names for this to work. So our text box, our text block, and our slider need to be named. You can bind both ways. You can bind the slider to the text block or the text box, or you can bind the text box and the text block to the slider. We're going to bind the slider to the value in the code behind, and then bind the text block or box to it and make it two way. Give our slider a maximum of 1,000 or and a minimum of negative 1,000. We have our horizontal set to center. Let's try stretch. Center isn't working out. Yeah, it should be stretch. Now, let's bind our text block to our slider using the element name and path attributes. So the value of our slider will be the text of our text box, our text block in this case. Now let's bind our slider to the selected items property value, which we'll, we're about to add to the layer. Open up the layer file. Find the bottom of the properties. Declare a field for our property. Color value, set it to zero, and declare a property. Both get and sets. If IntelliSense will let me. Don't forget the on property change. And it works. Change our selection. Yep, it works. It's storing the value in the field. They really need to get that grid splitter into the Windows app SDK as a base item. Should be one of the main items. Let's convert a text block into a text box. We're not majorly worried about changing the properties right now, and let's run it. It's going to seem to work fine at first. Watch the output window. But when we get rid of the value, have no value, we immediately get a XAML error. Which, in our negative, we get a XAML error. Now, once we enter a number, everything's fine. But that's not good enough.
not good enough. So here's one technique to fix it. Another technique is to use converters, um, but that causes brings in a whole another slew of problem, problems. We're going to add four buttons, two on the left, two on the right. And they're going to be small change, big change, or big up, small up. And big up, or big down, small down. Now we need to add our click events. This should be these should be commands in the actual application. Now we are going to use the doubles, the double variable try parse to get the value of the TB value text and do the correct operation for that button. Small down would be 1, big down would be 10, small up and big up will match them, or go up. Now let's test it. Clear the output. And they work, no errors. Of course, we can still enter a value, but we can go totally negative with our value, no errors. This is really a best solution for text blocks instead of text boxes. And then using a converter to round our value. So a converter really would make this work out better, uh, but they're just there's going to be too many problems. The converter is going to act automatically. We want whenever our value changes in the text box, we want the slider and whatever's in our screen in our view to automatically react. That's really where the problem is uh, with the converter. As the converter does provide that, but it's going to round our number. So when we put a decimal in, it's going to remove the decimal. And then we have to type our number in with a converter and then put a negative sign on it. So that's what the buttons really are for. If you got something out of this, like and subscribe. If you have any other controls you would like me to do a tutorial on in XAML, any of its three major forms, uh, WPF, UWP, or Windows App SDK, just put it in the comments and I will do it. <laughs> God bless and I will see you in the next video.